Hey, it's Nathan with CrazyJohnMarketing.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about creating forms within your active campaign account, so that way people could go ahead and subscribe to your email list. So let's go ahead and get into it. So to create forms, we would come into your account and go to website, and then you'll see the option right here for forms, and then we can go ahead and create a brand new form. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then of course, go ahead and name the form, and usually I'll name it like the name of the lead magnet that I'm delivering, so my free sales funnels. Then there's a the different form type. So there's inline form, floating bar, floating box, modal. And setting them up is all pretty much the same thing. It's just installing them or how they function is a little different. Like inline form, you go ahead and you embed on a website. Floating bar, of course, is the top bar in a browser. The floating box would be in the bottom corner. And then modal would be like a pop-up. So depending on how you want to display the form, you can select a different option. But 98% of the settings are the same no matter what form style you choose. Then we have our action here. So of course you probably wanna go ahead and subscribe them to a list and you can subscribe them to whatever list makes sense. And we can add additional actions as well. So let's click into this and I'm gonna go ahead and add a tag. And so I'll go ahead and type in LM and then my free sales funnels tag. So I'll be subscribing to a list and adding the tag free sales funnels. And as you can see, and add multiple actions as well. So there's also add to a deal or email results which will send you or anybody else an email when somebody fills out the form. So if you have a form that has like questions that people are answering and you wanna receive those answers into your inbox, you can have ActiveCampaign send you the email with the information. So that's kind of nice right there, but I'm gonna delete this out of there and we'll go ahead and click on create. And so this is what the default form looks like right here. And it's pretty intuitive. It's just like a page builder type of thing or a form builder if you wanna call it that. And you can click on the different areas and you could drag them around or delete them if you want to. And then over on the right hand side, there's other options. So the first category we have is the field. So we have like the standard fields. Like right now we have full name on the form, but maybe you only wanna click the first name. So we could go ahead and just drag that over here and plop it in there. And there we go. Now we're just clicking the first name instead of the full name. And then of course there's last name, phone number, there's header. So if you wanna go ahead and add a header to your form, I deleted mine already, but here you go, your call to action if you want to. And then there's also HTML code. So if you wanna embed some HTML code, you could go ahead and add that field. And then you could go ahead and type in your HTML code right in here and it would display as part of your form. Let's go ahead and delete that out of there. Uh, there's images, so you wanna add an image to your form. You could go ahead and do that, pretty self-explanatory. And I'll go ahead and delete it. There's CAPTCHA as well, so if you're having issues with people spamming your forms, you could go ahead and do that. There's a list selector, so if you wanna allow people to select a different list to go ahead and subscribe to, you could give them that option. So that is available to you. And then there's also a subscribe slash unsubscribe option as well, which I don't really know when you might use this unless you set up like a custom unsubscribe page or something like that. But the field is available if you can figure out how and why you wanna use it. So I'll delete it out of there. Then there's a the custom field. So if you've created any custom fields for your contacts, you could go ahead and drag those fields over here. Like for example, birthday. So if you wanted to collect people's birth date so you could send them a happy birthday email, you could go ahead and add the birthday field right to your form just like that. And then I also have account fields as well, which includes the account and then standard fields like address information, postal code and stuff like that. So quite a few different options depending on the type of information you wanna go ahead and collect. Now, additionally, you can go ahead and click on the particular fields and you can see that it gives you more options. So I could change the field header if I want to. So first name sounds fine and then type your first name. And I could go ahead and make this a required field as well if I want to. So I can just flip that little slider and now it is a required field and Active Campaign will make sure that the person filled out that field before they'll be able to submit the form. And then same concept, I can make birthday required too. So if I wanted to flip that slider, I could go ahead and do that. Email, it's automatically a required field because you need someone's email address in order to add them to Active Campaign. So you can't delete the email field or make it not required. And you can also go ahead and click on your submit button right here and you can change the label of it. So I change it to send me the lead magnet. There we go, very nice. And so that's fields and it's pretty self-explanatory stuff. Let's come over to style now. So we can change the layout of our form as well. So we have vertical fields or you could switch it to horizontal fields like that. And you could change the max width, you could change the background, the borders, the paddings, the corner, etc. Here's where you can go ahead and remove that active campaign branding. So you might not want marketing by active campaign down there. You can just flip that slider, turn it off. There you go. And then you could go ahead and change your font and your header and all this stuff right here. It's pretty self-explanatory and I'm not gonna go through it in great detail because I'm sure you can figure it out. 
out. Coming over to the next tab, which is options, we have some more stuff. So here we have on submit what we want to do. So we can go ahead and show a thank you message or bring them to a thank you page URL, in which case you could go ahead and plug the URL in right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And then we can go ahead and adjust our form action as well, which is what we set up when we first set up our form. So if we decided we wanted to add some more actions, like maybe we want to add more tags or email the results to ourselves, we could go ahead and add those functions right here. But also let's go ahead and click on edit here. So when you build a form with an active campaign, it's going to automatically turn on this opt-in confirmation email. And more than likely, this is something that you don't want to have happen. So what this will do is as soon as someone submits the form, it's going to send them an email and it's going to ask them to confirm that they want to receive emails from you. So then they're going to confirm their subscription before they get added to your active campaign account and the lead magnet gets sent out to them. And while doing it this way typically leads to better quality subscribers, it's also a barrier to entry because not everybody's gonna come in here and confirm their subscription and all that other type of stuff. So every time I build a form in Active Campaign, I make sure to turn off this opt-in confirmation email. You can just flip this slider to turn it off. But if you wanted to use it, you could go ahead and preview it and edit it if you want to customize it. And you could also change the confirmation action like redirect to our URL and so on. So if you want people to have to confirm their email address, before you start sending them emails, then go ahead and turn this on. But I always turn it off and then I filter people out later on if they don't engage or anything like that. So that's my point of view on the topic. We'll go ahead and click on save. And we also have the option right here for allow blank fields. So this allows blank fields to overwrite existing field data. This applies to text inputs, text areas, checkboxes, date fields, and multi-selection lists. So basically what this means is if you already have a subscriber and they've already entered a bunch of information into Active Campaign, and then they come to this form and they don't like add their birth date, for example. Well, then if you have this slider turned on, it will replace the birth date that you have for them with blank information. So it just depends on who's filling out the form and if you want them to be able to overwrite their current profile with blank information. So that's something to be aware of. And for my particular example, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And now I have a couple advanced features that I wanna show you as well. So if you want to customize the look and feel of your form even more, and you know CSS, you can go ahead and edit the CSS of your form. So if you click this button right here, it loads up like a little code editor where you can go ahead and add CSS to your form. So what you can do is click on inspector and you know find the particular element that you wanna go ahead and update. And I'm no CSS professional, but this should still give you an idea of how it works. So let's say that I wanna go ahead and change my color of my header to blue. So I can go ahead and change it to blue and I might need to make it important. So there we go, it is blue now and maybe I wanna go ahead and center it. So we can do text align and center. And there we go, my header is blue and in the center. And maybe my button down here, I wanna make it the full width of my form. So let's do the inspector option, click on our button, and then I can do width and maybe 100%. And that looks good. And let's go ahead and change the font size as well of our button. Make it nice and big, want it to stand out. We'll do 18 pixels. And then maybe font weight, I can spell weight bold. There we go. So now our button's more standing out-ish. And of course, if you know CSS, you could do a whole lot more than I'm doing right here. But hopefully you're getting the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. But that's how you could go ahead and add custom CSS to your form. Now, another advanced option is to have hidden fields included in your form. And one common hidden field is the source field. So this would be the source of the individual filling out your form. And in order to do this, we need to create a custom hidden field. So I'm going to come back out of the form and we're going to go ahead and do fields. And I have a video all about creating fields. So if you need more information on fields, please check out my YouTube channel. But we'll add a brand new field. And this one I'm gonna go ahead and call source. And I'm gonna add it to my general details group. And field type is going to be hidden. So hidden field just like that. And we'll click on add. All right, so now we have a source hidden field. Let's come back to our form and open this thing up to edit it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to my custom fields and drag the source field over here, just like that. So source is a hidden field and I'll show you how it works in just a second, but this is enough to go on to the next step. We're gonna go ahead and click on integrate. And now Active Campaign gives us a couple different ways to integrate our form to our website or our properties. So we have the simple embed code, and this is one I'm gonna be using in this video, but basically it's going to embed the form straight into our website. And then if we need to update the form, we just come back to Active Campaign, update the form within Active Campaign, and it'll update the look and feel of the form on our website. 
Additionally, you could go ahead and do a full embed. And as you can see, this includes all the CSS and all the code to make the form look the way it does. And so if you need the full code for your form, there's that option available to you right here. But if you embed the full form and then you come back to Active Campaign and you make changes to the look and feel of the form, well, then you're gonna have to regenerate the full embed code again, and then go back to your website and replace the code with the new code that's been generated. As all your style options and all that stuff is like hard coded into this full embed code. Additionally, there's an option for a link. So if you just wanna give people a link to your form you could go ahead and do that and they could come here and fill out the form just like that pretty self-explanatory we also have the option to use a wordpress plugin so you can use the wordpress plugin to do it or you can manually embed the code yourself which is what we're going to do in this video and also you could go ahead and add the form to a facebook page if you have that anyway we're going to go ahead and embed and i'm going to do the simple embed option and I'm gonna to come to my WordPress website now. Maybe you don't have WordPress, but the concept remains the same. Our goal is to add custom HTML to our page. So whether on WordPress or you have a different theme in WordPress, the concept is to add custom HTML. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a custom HTML field, custom HTML, and then I can paste our embed code right there and we'll go ahead and update it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open that window up. So here we go, here is our very lovely squeeze page and here is our form to go ahead and fill out. Now before I fill out this form, I wanna talk about the hidden source field. So in order to add a value to that hidden field, we just come up to our address bar and do a question mark and then source equals to whatever it is that we want the source to represent. So let's say that I'm running Facebook ads to this page. Well, the link in my Facebook ad could have this question mark source equals Facebook. And then everybody that lands on the page through this link, that hidden source field will be Facebook. And then I'll know which leads came from my Facebook ad. So let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and refresh the page using that source equals Facebook link. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the form. And I'm gonna hit send me lead magnet and it should bring me to my thank you page. So thank you for downloading the sales funnel blueprints. Now let's come to our active campaign account and see how our new subscriber came into our system. So contacts and I have Nathan plus FB right here. And we can see right here, the source is Facebook right there. So that's that hidden field came in as Facebook. So now I know, you know, Nathan came through Facebook and I can also scroll down. And I can see that they've been added to my LM free sales funnel tag and my list crazy eye marketing and then a whole bunch of automations and everything also fired off as soon as they subscribe to my email list and so it looks like everything is working now of course if i need to make changes to my form i can come back in here and just edit my form however i need to like let me go ahead and delete this html block right here and we'll change our header and then i'll click on integrate and then if i come back over to my website and view my page my form should update. So there we go, get 18 free sales funnel blueprints and then it removed that HTML field as well. And everything seems to be working properly. And so that's how you can go about creating forms within Active Campaign. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate it. Sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, and or check out crazyeyemarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.